So welcome to Seabrook School Board. Um, today is February 6th, and let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I guess we're going to call for a public comment, if anyone has anything they'd like to bring up. I'm not seeing any, we can leave it open for 30 minutes. Okay. Our approval of minutes <coughs> for January 10th, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 10th, 2023, regular meeting. All second. All in favor? <coughs> Motion's recorded. Superintendent's report. Sure. Um, first, just a brief update on the legislative roundtable from last week. So we had a number of local um, representatives uh, join us just to talk about some of the bills proposed uh, related to education in the upcoming session. So there are some that would benefit our schools and some that um, we had concerns about. So it was a good opportunity to talk about that. Um, Christina was able to attend on behalf of the Seabrook Board, and we will meet again in early April just to talk about um, what has survived um, the first part of the legislative session and moves forward to crossover. So that's when the bills that are in the House went through the Senate and vice versa. Um, and also, um, parties just talked about how to share information and weigh in on pending legislation. So there is good information about that in the School Board Association newsletter, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and then you can contact your representatives directly. Um, the superintendents, the student leadership team uh, will be meeting on Monday from 1 to 2.30 at Winnicunit, and the topic that they've requested is stress, mental, and physical health. So Dr. Toomey and several members of our school counseling and social work team will join us for that discussion. I noted that deliberative sessions for each of our districts are scheduled for this week, so Matt will be very busy <laughs> making the rounds. Um, filing period for school district elections closed on Friday, February 3rd, so our school district clerks uh, will be preparing the ballots for the March 14th election following the deliberative sessions. I did want to point out that it is National School Counseling Week, so um, please join me in thanking our school counselors for all of their work to support our students and their journeys to be their best selves. Um, the week is intended to highlight the amazing impact counselors can have in helping students achieve success and plan for their futures. And then finally, um, Dr. Hobbs and I are working with principals over the coming month as they prepare their recommendations to our boards about teacher renewals for 2023 to 2024. Um, in addition to evaluations, we'll also be looking to make sure that teachers are making appropriate progress towards licensure or re-licensure that we <coughs> regularly report on. That is it. Thank you. Curriculum, instruction and assessment report. Sure. Uh, for this month, I just added the uh, Portrait of the Learner timeline for the spring. Uh, just so you guys know, we kind of turned a corner uh, in, with respect to our data. We're no longer collecting data and analyzing data. We're really validating it now. So we're just making sure that we heard what we think we heard from the community. Uh, we've distilled it down into four pillars or themes, if you will. Academics, dispositions, which is like empathy, uh, problem solving, kindness, uh, those kind of things. Uh, essential life skills came up as a big theme, like being able to balance a checkbook, change a tire, awesome. be an adult, those kind of things. Um, and then physical and mental health came up as the fourth pillar. Um, so we'll be uh, working in the next few weeks, you can see the details in my report, uh, to validate that and to come to you guys with a problem. That's it. Okay, thank you. All right, student services report. Tui's not here. Okay. Um, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them on the Okay, sure. Brian? All right, um, we have some great pictures in there. I'm, I'm excited to, um, to thank our UA team for the winter carnival we had last week. It was one of our community days for um, the month of February. I also would like to recognize Rory Easton, who's here. We he had fourth graders who were part of the chess club, and I know that the report last month um, was did not include the fourth graders, but I want to thank her for a really successful chess club. And 
our hope, I think, is to extend it and grow the chess club because we have interest. Um, I think we have interest much lower than four. Yeah. Right? And so I think it's going to be too too popular next year, but we'll uh, see how many kiddos we can have. And so thank you, Miss Easton. Um, we had some uh, field trips rescheduled. Our, we are going to be able to see Lama Lama. That was a big dilemma last week, um, and that is being rescheduled. Um, there's some information about behavior discipline referrals um, falling down for the month of January. Um, also have some information about safety. Uh, 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 Mr. Parsons and I have been working with our safety team to hold uh, more uh, informational meetings, uh, more information for parents. So you'll also see that in our Sunday messages about the safety drills we do um, and actually practicing our safety drills. So the next one is a shelter in place, which we hope to do this week. Um, and what else? Let's see, there's a picture of our chess code. So that's it. Thank you. report, Sure, thank you. Um, you'll notice you should have a hard copy in front of you. Um, it is available for, as public record. Uh, I was a little late with the deadline, so my apologies uh, for that. Um, so I'll just start with um, our winter concert a few weeks ago was a, a big success. Thank you to Mr. Woolley and all of the performers. They did a great job. Uh, the cafeteria was packed, and I love the Mission Impossible theme. Um, there's a picture there uh, during that. It was great. Um, we had a great pep rally on Friday the 27th. We're bringing those pep rallies back. This is a little bit more than, than uh, what we've been doing with our RAM assemblies. So we kind of combined everything into this one extravaganza, which was uh, really a lot of fun. Uh, we actually ran our, our spelling bee uh, finalists to start off the pep rally. And uh, it was fantastic. The crowd was well behaved, and I'd like to congratulate Alexander Lawson, who won the spelling bee, is moving on to the next round of the uh, competition. Uh, so good luck to Alexander. Uh, we also recognize, as we do monthly, over 30 outstanding student Rams and uh, 12 outstanding staff Rams. What was interesting about this um, uh, recognition part of the program that day was. I had two sixth graders approach me and ask if they could create a form and have students recognize their favorite outstanding teachers. So um, they did that, uh, the two sixth graders, they put together a form and I was able to send it out to every kid. Um, so it was really kind of a neat way to recognize staff. So these, uh, this particular month it was a student recognizing their outstanding ramp staff and teachers. Um, so that was pretty fun. Um, we also played some really cool games, Hungry Hungry Hippos, which I've never seen before and in the gym with like a WB Mason box and kind of like the wheelbarrow with the, uh, the balls. And it was, it was pretty neat. Uh, we rallied up the number of balls at the end and I forget, I think it was the eighth grade that won with like 300 balls or something. It was, it was crazy. Um, so thanks to our committee, Colleen Sousa, um, among others for planning that event uh, with the pep rally. It was, it was a great success. Um, and then just, I have a safety component, which is very similar to Brian, so I'm not going to read that, but just a reminder as far as new parking um, and drop off procedures at the middle school, if I could just ask folks not to park their vehicles uh, in designated areas as no parking or the fire lanes. Um, we've also had some um, uh, concern around some of our early dismissal students who require additional transportation, the ramp uh, exiting the entrance in the exit area uh, has been blocked uh, from traffic. Uh, so it's been difficult for some of our students who require that extra transportation um, to, uh, to get to their vehicles. Oh yeah, and lastly, today was the first day we um, eliminated our, our uh, RAM block in favor of adding an additional flex block. Um, and that was based on some feedback from students and staff that they felt that the flex block was a really valuable way to get um, some community connections and some relationship building. Um, so we started that today. So we will have a flex period now every day. Um, that's it. Thank you. Um, for next report, staff meeting minutes. Thank you. Um, so we have attached the um, year to date revenue and expenditure reports on board docs. Um, on the revenue side, um, we are um, tracking um, well. Um, there are a number of accounts where we have seen unanticipated revenue. 
Um, I've spoken in the past about the um, New Hampshire Retirement System refund. Um, we also are receiving additional um, special education aid um, this year. Um, unfortunately, that's because we are incurring more special education costs, which you'll see on the expenditure side. Um, and then, um, you know, we are, there are um, some additional revenues on the um, banking interest side. So um, with the um, rate hikes that we've seen this year, we have received about $10,000 more in banking interest than we um, anticipated. Um, and we have received uh, a few um, donations that from our generous community members, which, uh, which is represents about eight thousand dollars, which is which is really nice to, to see. Um, so on the expenditure side, um, we are we, we are tracking um, okay. <laughs> As you know, we um, we have a default budget this year. Our proposed operating budget last year did um, fail, so. Um, we are operating on a default budget, which is about three hundred thousand dollars less than what we had proposed. Um, which, um, in many of our accounts, we're we're okay. However, um, I've spoken about special education um, previously, um, but we are um, substantially over budget in special education. Um, currently, we're you know in excess of three hundred and thirty thousand dollars over budget in special education. Um, our buildings accounts are, are over budget in a number of, of areas, um, and this is primarily a byproduct of inflation. Um, as you are all aware, um, the costs of materials, supplies, labor have all increased this year. Um, we've, we've seen that at our home with heating fuels and with our groceries. So um, we are over budget on some of those buildings accounts. Um, that being said, um, we, we've recognized some savings and some salaries accounts and some benefits accounts because of this difficult labor market. We've had some vacancies, um, so I, I think we'll we will be um, in good shape um, to round out the end of this fiscal year. We still have another you know five months. However, many of most of these costs are encumbered. Um, we will evaluate probably in the May time frame as to whether we want to utilize the special education expendable trust or the building maintenance expendable trust to supplement some of these expenditures. And in the meantime, um, you know, we'll, um, you know, the SAU will be working closely with, uh, with the, the building administration, uh, Brian and Jamie, um, they, they really, they do a really nice job of managing their budget. So we're just gonna um, have to um, tighten um, some of our expenditures um, as we close out the, the remainder of the school year. Um, but we, we should be in good shape um, to end the fiscal year in June. Um, and then finally, I just want to note um, this evening's deliberative session. Um, so we do have um, our deliberative session scheduled for seven this evening, which I know everyone is excited for. Um, we only have three warrant articles on the ballot, um, two of which our board recommended, and the third was a citizen's petition warrant article. Um, and that was really... Um, a, with the, the focus or the, the, the priority to focus on the collective bargaining agreement. Um, so the, um, we have our operating budget, which um, will be the first warrant that will be presented this evening, um, which is essentially level funded. Um, it's just, or versus the default budget, we have a very small differential. Um, and that's, I do want to emphasize that's a byproduct of special education costs. So when you look at your budget, um, the default is determined by what the prior year's budget is, and then it's um, then increased or decreased by con contractual or legally mandated items, and then reduced by one-time expenditures or um, eliminations of positions. So we had substantial special education costs, so those all rolled into the default budget, hence how close the default is to the operating budget. Now, um, that means that we are very lean in el elsewhere in the budget because there are many areas of the budget that cannot be included in the default. So when you look at our busing contract, for example, we have a contract with first student that has 
an annual increase, well, that can't be included in the default budget. So there's there's area there's our health insurance for our non-union employees. We have a health insurance premium increase every year, but that that increase for non-union employees can't be included in the default budget. So there's there's many expenditures like that, our non-union cost of living adjustments that are not in the default budget. So that that gap of about sixty thousand dollars is really probably negative when you when you look at the operating so budget. So nobody gets any of that stuff on a default budget. You have to have a past budget. It's not included in the default budget number. So. Um, so that just is, it really reflects how lean um, this budget is that we will be presenting this evening, so I won't uh, belabor the point. Um, but this was, um, this was really important because we're, we're looking at that collective bargaining agreement um, for our teachers. Our teachers are what makes our schools run. If they're the most important aspect of the learning experience, um, and we need to offer competitive compensation for our teachers to maintain our great ones and then our ability to hire new teachers. Um, so that is our second warrant article. The third warrant article is um, that citizens petition article by Sacred Heart um, to provide um, some supplies and materials for our um, for the Sacred Heart School, which is a Catholic school in um, Hampton for Seabrook residents. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. How much is that one article again for the Sacred Heart? It is about sixteen thousand dollars. Sixteen thousand two hundred seventy-four dollars. Right now, it's not. Right now, by the board. It is not recommended by the school board. It is recommended by the budget committee. And um, as a side note, but I know you'll probably mention this in the deliberative session, but just to add extra, if the cost of living raise fails here. It will fail in Northampton, Southampton, Hampton Falls, Winnicott, the entire SAU. If the collective bargaining agreement fails, yes, the CBA. So that so if it fails in any one district, it'll fail in all of the districts. Which is very extra. <laughs> and teachers will not receive a cost of living adjustment, and they will not receive a stipend. <clears throat> and that wage gap compared to other districts in our area will widen and we will have difficulty keeping our teachers. A question on the um, special education one. I know we are talking about every year it goes up and up and up. Um, <coughs> is that because we have more residents in town that are requiring the special education services that our school can't provide? Is that the reason why that goes up or is it because of well, portion of the increase is as you mentioned for outer district placements those are those are for students that have specialized needs um, whether it's medical or um, you know, behavioral or maybe court place um, where we can't service those students in the district um, and we have to tuition them out to a specialized school um, so that is part that is a pretty significant part of the increase and then there's um, what we try to do is provide programming in school that can service our students so we and we've instituted some of those programs so you as you know we have, we've hired some um, registered behavior technicians we have bcba we offer um as, as many services as we can at scale um here in district because ultimately um that is our goal um it's typically in the best interest for both the students and the school to have students here. Unfortunately, in some cases, that's not always possible. There's one in there. Um, if there are any questions, we can certainly do our best to answer those, but Peter's generally just providing an update on uh, maintenance work that has been completed over the last month. Policies first. We oh no, we have a uh, reopening plan update. I'm afraid we do. There is no actual update to the reopening plan, other than we are required um, in order to receive ESSER funds. We're required to update our plan at least every six months. So review that and um, approve it. And so I would be asking the board to approve 
our existing reopening <coughs> plan, essentially, that we just carry that forward. So do we take a motion? Yes, please. I make a motion to approve the original reopening plan update. Well, it's an update of the original reopening plan. <laughs> For existing reopening? Yes, that's it. Existing. Love that. A second. All in favor? Some new business policies for us. Yeah, policies. So the policy committee also met last week. We have 33 policies. Um, 19 of them are reviewed. Most are um, carried forward from areas we've touched upon already this year. Or about half and then the rest are in our section K of the manual and then there are about 14 policies in section K that are redundant or don't exist within the New Hampshire School Board Association or existed maybe in only one of our districts across <coughs> the SAU and so the policy committee has recommended those for deletion but I'm happy to answer questions about any. I think the policy committee meets next again in early April. Thanks for no, no vote required. All right, so we need a moderator on the So, um, as you know, we have our delivery session this evening. So, typically, before um, the delivery, we will meet with uh, our moderator, um, Paul Kelly, as well as our clerk, um, Cheryl Vaughn. And um, when our legal counsel arrives, okay, um, should be here in just a few. Minutes. Should be shortly. That's Bob Casasa. Um, but Paul, did you want to keep trying to give your sure, rules? Great. Hi everyone. Uh, Paul Kelly. I'm your moderator. I've served in that capacity for 20 years, uh, and tonight is my swan song. Uh, NCP <laughs> election. So uh, thank you so much for uh, putting up with me for the last 20 years. It's been my pleasure to serve uh, the school board in capacity as your moderator. Uh, Typically, uh, how we'll have it, we'll have your assistant superintendent. I, I believe, Madam Chair, you'll have your assistant superintendent uh, go over the warrant articles and talk and read them. So we will uh, we'll, we'll yield to him. Uh, as far as if we have any questions or the voice comments coming from the floor, we usually like them to be addressed to the moderator. We don't want them to be you know, picking on one of you uh, hardworking uh, board members or, or SAU employees. So if I see that, if there are some rowdy people, I'll, I'll pull them back in because that's not what it's about. It should be directed to me, and I'll get answers to your questions if we have to go back. Typically, I like to let people in the board have about five minutes tops uh, because you should be asking a question, not making a, a, a campaign speech. So that's typically how we do it. It's worked fine uh, for the years. And anything I can do to make the process more expeditious, uh, let me know, and I'm more than happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Capiche? Capiche. Capiche. Right. Capiche. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. On behalf of the SA21 and Seabrook School Board, I do want to thank Paul because he has been an amazing <laughs> moderator and it's great service to the to the district and we really appreciate it. And I thought you were we we're gonna get one more year out of you. But, <laughs> but, but the good news is I think you want the town moderator. I was a town moderator for 20 years too, and, and Rio Tilt took the reins for me and he said he would take the reins for this uh, too. So I think he signed up and you know. I think he's unopposed, so it's going into good hands, Shirley. Also, and thank you so much for those kind of comments. Thank you. Thank you. We, we have a actually a second retirement. So, on behalf of SU Twenty One and the, the board, I want to thank Cheryl for her service. As a, um, she is equally amazing. Um, and Shane is unopposed, so she will be your next clerk. Yay! <laughs> Uh, I don't think we have, no, we can announce our upcoming meetings. Okay. Madam Chief, if I can just say too, the last comment is your moderator. Your moderator is only as good as everyone in the room. And I'll tell you, without a good town clerk, the moderator is it was nothing. So Cheryl was the best uh, for me. She, she pulled my feet out of the fire more times than not, and the sixth <laughs> moderator pulled my out for the floor more times than not. So you're, you're really getting in good hands getting with this uh, woman for your, uh, your clerk. So good luck like to her. Yeah. Thank you. Enough said. Thank you. We'll try not to have any recounts for you. This year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to that stuck. <laughs> No, nope. meetings. Yeah. All right. So operations committee meeting is Tuesday, March seventh. Um, we have voting day Tuesday, March fourteenth, and Seabrook school board meeting Tuesday, March twenty-first. Yes. 
outcome. That will be your reorganization. Mm -hmm. That's when I get to yeah. yield the gavel. Thirty seconds. Fight to share. It's always an exciting meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do we need to do that? So what you'll be doing is recessing, yeah. um, and then after the delivery session concludes, we'll, um, we'll continue the board meeting, and that'll give you the opportunity, if you'd like, to either reaffirm your vote or re-vote on any of the warrant card for this. So mm -hmm. you will have another opportunity to, to vote. Um, if, say for example, something changes mm -hmm. at the, uh, during the delivery session. So, so if something, if something were to change um, during delivery session, how then does our revote? It just goes on the ballot, saying the school board recommends this article and the count, or the school board does not recommend this article. So, so at, in, at Seabrook, it'll just say recommend or not recommend. It won't give the actual vote on the ballot. Mm -hmm. However, it could potentially change one way or the other. We've, we've had situations where a board has changed their overall vote. So okay. it's, not, it's not necessary that you reaffirm your votes, but it's, uh, it's an option and, and then you just adjourn. So. Okay. All right, so motion is Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to just close public comment before we will that. Close public comment. Mm -hmm. Hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then I'll make a motion to recess the meeting at. Oh, sorry, it's not a good time. Um, five six thirty. Yeah. Six thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To attend the delivery session. One second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. So